You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Folks, tonight I'm going to embark on a course from which there is no return. It is important that you learn the information that I'm going to begin to impart to you tonight. And yes, it is a part of the Mind Control series. It's also a part of the history of the Illuminati in this nation. And it will explain an awful lot of things to you that have never been explainable before. It's going to explain to you the link between the lodges of the Illuminati, the intelligence community, and the underworld. It is extremely dangerous what I'm embarking upon, simply because so many people who have attempted to reveal this history previously have been killed in the process of doing it. I have no fear, and I will finish what I start, or someone will, because it needs to be done. Tonight I begin to narrate to you a special report of the Executive Intelligence Review entitled The Ugly Truth About the ADL. Now, I want you to understand something. I am not talking about Jews. I am talking about a branch of the Illuminati, the control structure that is bringing one world government into fruition, destroying the sovereignty of nations and many, many other things. As you will see, ladies and gentlemen, the ADL does not represent the Jewish people, but instead is using them and is manipulating them so that they innocently, as many of you have done throughout your life innocently, are helping to bring about the destruction of the sovereignty of individual nations, the destruction of individual creator-endowed constitutionally guaranteed rights, and the formation of a one-world totalitarian socialist government. I want it clearly understood that the hour of the time has stated on many, many occasions that we oppose racism of any kind in any form by anyone. What you're going to discover is that the ADL, while calling many, many people anti-Semitic, are themselves one of the greatest racist groups that has ever existed upon the face of the You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm your host, William Cooper. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we begin the origin the history, the dogma, and the identity of the ancient mystery religions which are now known as the Mystery Schools, the Order of the Quest, Freemasonry, the Ancient Order of the Rose and Cross, the Knights Templar, the Sovereign and Military Order of the Knights of Malta, the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, the Priory de Sion, the Thule Society, or sometimes known as the Thule Society. The Order, the Skull and Bones, the Russell Trust, the Jason Society, the Scroll and Key, the Illuminati, and I could go on and on and on and on. But the most important thing to realize is that they all have been collectively known throughout the ages as the Mystery Schools the Illuminati, which literally means illumined ones, they are all one and the same, as you will come to know. And you will understand perfectly how they've been able to infiltrate all of our society. What you hear tonight does not necessarily reflect my views, our beliefs, our religion.
They have ruled from the shadows, you see? And they call themselves the guardians of the secrets of the ages. And their first, their first religion was called astrotheology, or the worship of the heavens. And their first object of worship was the sun. The second object of worship was the moon. And everywhere you see the mystery schools or the mystery religion, you will see the symbols of the sun and the moon, also known as Osiris and Isis. For in the religion of the mystery schools, they believe that man was held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust and vindictive God. And that man was not told by this unjust and vindictive God that he could have the same powers. And man was set free from the bonds of ignorance by Lucifer through his agent Satan. And many believe that the two are the same. And that's okay because maybe they are. And that through the gift of intellect, man himself will become God. Now for those of you who understand what I am imparting to you now, you may not even have to listen any farther, for it explains everything that has ever happened in the history of man, and everything that is happening now, and all that is to happen in the future. They believe that the tree-dwelling ancestors of man were among the most intelligent beings of their distant age. And when these creatures finally abandoned the trees and walked fully upright, freeing their hands to serve as implements of their minds as well as their bodies, there began the most successful evolutionary drive toward higher intelligence ever witnessed in nature. Now notice Lucifer was called the son of the morning star. It was also called the morning star. And there is a great mystery here because Christ also called himself the morning star. But I have been told by those who have been initiated in the mystery schools that Christ and Lucifer are one and the same being. What you believe, of course, is your own business and is not my intention to make you believe anything but rather to impart to you what I have learned over many, many years of study into the secrets of those who worship the ancient mystery religions in secret for thousands of years. I do not advise you what you should believe or not believe. But I do advise you that we all need to learn as much as we can about everything that we can. Because one thing I have learned in my life is that most of what we have ever been taught has been a lie. And that whoever these people are, who are the priests, the adepts, the initiates, and the mystery schools. They are in control and they are shaping the future and that future will affect all of us so we had better learn as much about them as we can. One of the, the brilliant things about Bill was that he was able to fluidly switch between when he was reading to when he was commenting so that sometimes it was imperceivable. He had such a a fantastic grasp of uh, the English language that he could speak to you almost the same way that these ancient texts did. We have to be very careful about how we interpret what we read, especially the Bible. And I'll tell you why. When I research these secret societies and I research the Bible, and by the way, I'm a Christian, so if you're a Christian, don't think I'm knocking your religion. I'm not. I'm just telling you what I found. I have found that at the very heart and core of all these secret societies lurks the Kabbalah. 
the Kabbalah is the ancient Jewish mysticism. It is a method of encoding information through a system of mathematics and numbers. It is some of the most ancient knowledge that man has ever possessed and has been kept secret and given only to those who have proven themselves worthy through the process of initiation. Nobody knows where it comes from. I can tell you this, it was there long before the Jews came along. The Jews just took it and preserved it and they passed it down and it's used by everybody because it's at the heart and core of the secret knowledge, the metaphysics, the real science that none of us know anything about. These people that belong to the secret societies never dared to write down in any language what they knew, what it was that they were guarding, because then someone could steal it and then the secret would be out. So they devised secret systems of encoding the secrets of the ages, the knowledge, the hidden knowledge, the occult. Now occult doesn't mean evil. It doesn't mean the devil. It doesn't mean Satan. Occult means hidden means hidden. That's all it means. So they took this knowledge and they made it occult through a system of encoding encryption, one of which is mathematics, numbers. Another is architecture. Everybody wonder why do they have a fraternal organization called the Freemasons? Aren't those the guys that build walls? You bet they do. But every wall they build contains the secrets that have been kept and maintained throughout the ages, and it's encoded in the architecture and in the measurements of the buildings and in the mathematical form formulas used to derive the geometry and the shape, the length and breadth and height of rooms. It's all encoded there. The sun enters each heavenly sign or house of the zodiac in what is called the 30th degree, and leaves at the 33rd degree. Thus God's Son is said by the ancients to begin his ministry at 30 and dies at 33. A Freemason is not told the truth of the object of his worship until he attains the 30th degree. And this is why the highest degree in Freemasonry is the 33rd degree, for no one can rise higher than the sun. Just the way they look at it, here's their metaphor for the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, Man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer. They do not believe in any entity called a devil, and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. That's their religion. At the highest level, their goal is to create a world in which the adepts, the thousand points of light, working behind the veil to create the culmination of the great plan, can realize the ultimate happiness for mankind. Their whole goal 
with this philosophy is to teach all men and women that the only end of life is to seek the utmost pleasure and happiness that you can get out of it because when you die there's nothing else. That's what they teach. That's what they want you to be. They don't want laws against sexual promiscuity. That's why they don't want families. That's why they don't want marriage. That's why they encourage homosexuality. There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours because you're operating from a place of ignorance. And until you change that, you're going to be bumbling around, bumping into each other, saying and doing the wrong things, not understanding the nature of your en enemy. And if you don't understand the nature of your enemy and the weapons they use, you cannot fight that enemy. You can't fight the battle. You shouldn't even be on the battlefield. That's why you're losing the war. And don't tell me you're not, because I'm in a place of great knowledge about who's winning and who's losing this war. And I can assure you, you're losing the war. It doesn't mean it can't be turned around. But it'll never be turned around until you learn what you need to know. You don't even recognize half the weapons that they use against you. And some of them seem so insignificant that you don't even try. They want to create a world where everybody is happy all the time. Doing all of the things that, if you're from a good religious upbringing, is wrong to do. If you're not from a religious upbringing, but you have a good brain and you understand the purpose of morals and ethics, it's still the wrong thing to do. If you're a thinking person. And then the priests had an army. Oh boy, weren't they happy with that? Their whole purpose throughout history has been to teach a small number of people how to become adept at controlling everyone else and presenting their societies as desirable to the profane so that you'll go knock on the door and say, hey, can I be a member and be initiated with the promise of learning some great secret. What is that secret? The secret is what I have just told you this morning. The secret is how to control everybody else. The only thing that can stop it is by waking up vast amounts of sleeping people. Sheeple is what they are. They are following the Judas goat right into the shearing pens and from there they will go to the slaughter and they will not know that anything is wrong until they smell the blood of the sheeple in front of them. What you are hearing, folks, is for the first time in history the public revelation of the origin, the history, the dogma, and the identity of those who operate in secret to bring about a worldwide totalitarian socialist government. They are known to Christians as Mystery Babylon. It is an ancient religion. Those of you who are smart enough to know what is transpiring here know that these are historic broadcasts. And by making these broadcasts, I have sealed my fate. The sun enters each heavenly sign or house of the zodiac in what is called the 30th degree and leaves at the 33rd degree. Thus God's Son is said by the ancients to begin his ministry at 30 and dies at 33. A Freemason is not told the truth of the object of his worship until he attains the 30th degree. 
And this is why the highest degree in Freemasonry is the 33rd degree, for no one can rise higher than the sun. When viewing the shimmering rays of sunlight on a body of water at dawn or sunset, one can still see today how God's sun walks on water. It was well understood by ancient man that our weather was caused and controlled by the sun. It was a simple fact that God's sun had the power to control storms at will. The ancient Egyptians taught that he did this as he rested in his heavenly boat while crossing the sky. Thus, we read that God's sun quieted the tempest, our great storm on the sea, while in his boat. Which boat? The boat of Isis. Ra, the sun god, also known as Osiris, in the bark of millions of years in which he traversed the heavens. He wears on his head and accompanies a vast sun disk symbolizing his powers as lord of the heavens. The boat formed of a serpent bears his eye and the god is seated on a pedestal representing Mayet, the divine order. Folks, when we stop to realize that every single king, prince, lord, governor, dictator, despotic ruler, civil and social institution, national flag, coat of arms, educational institution, military medal, award, organizational insignia, medallion, badge, emblem, citation, trophy, banner, pendant, political standard, our ensign, agency of government, our religion, uses the sun as a primary symbol, then it can truly be said, in the mystery school that God's Son is, quote, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, unquote. A worldwide totalitarian socialist government. They are known to Christians as Mystery Babylon. It is an ancient religion. Those of you who are smart enough to know what is transpiring here, know that these are historic broadcasts, and by making these broadcasts, I have sealed my fate. A worldwide totalitarian socialist government. Because when I'm here, I'm just Bill Cooper. I'm talking to you from my heart. When I'm on the radio, I am on a mission, and that mission is to slap people upside the head and wake them up and even make them hate me. If that's what it takes to get them to go examine what I'm telling them to find out that it's right. The truthfulness of what you're about to hear. Because it is so important not only that you understand it and believe it, but that you act upon it. And now we're being bombarded with messages that Osama bin Laden is planning to attack the United States of America. And I'm telling you, be prepared for a major attack. But it won't be Osama bin Laden. It will be those behind the New World Order. I did not believe that the government would use me in that way. I had devoted my whole life to government service. I had been in the Air Force. I was in the Navy. I was a river patrol boat captain in Vietnam. But over the years, I've done a lot of research. And what I've discovered is there's no proof existing anywhere that extraterrestrials are real or that have ever visited this planet. The right track is don't believe anybody. Don't believe me. Don't believe George Bush. Don't believe anyone. You got to go out and you got to get proof in your hand before you can believe anything. And to do otherwise today is, is the biggest mistake that anyone can ever make. One of the biggest misconceptions in this country is what this country is all about, who founded it, for what purpose, and most specifically, what it is that we're all looking for. There is no such thing as an ozone layer. What is it called? Because what are these? These are ions. Ozone is an ion of oxygen. It's called the ionosphere. So why don't these freako environmentalist liars call it what it is, the ionosphere? Because it would be the truth and we can all prove that the ionosphere is not disappearing. You watch me every day of my life. If anything happens to me, you don't have to do any more research. You know damn well everything I'm telling you is true. And they don't want you to know that. So they're not going to touch me unless they can make it look like an accident where you will believe that it's an accident. And I'm telling you right now, they know how to make people die of heart attacks, strokes, 
brain hemorrhages. Why won't you believe millions of people who are telling you that they have seen these craft lying in the air, that they're metal, that they are intelligently guided, that they are real, and that they demonstrate a technology beyond anything that we know of publicly anyway. I can tell you that we have this technology in the United States. It is being flown in an area called Area 51, Groom Dry Lake, in the Nevada Test Range in the state of Nevada. It is not our government, though you have to understand, that is doing these things. It is not our government that's failing us. It's not the Constitution or the Bill of Rights that is, that's a bad instrument. It is a group of men who belong to secret societies, who have infiltrated our society and our government at all levels and are destroying it and subverting it from within. You see, the CIA created Osama bin Laden. They recruited him. They trained him. They found his leadership. They brought them all together. Digesting all this information, reading all of these letters from people of every kind of background that you can imagine, every race, every religion, every kind of agenda, and believe me, there's an awful lot of agendas going on in this country that are dangerous. There is lots of evidence, tons of it in fact, that there are a group of people collectively known as the Illuminati who want us to believe in some extraterrestrial threat from space so that they can cause a world government you know, bringing together of all the people to resist that external threat. The clear understanding that President Kennedy was killed by William Greer, the Secret Service agent driving his limousine in the motorcade. These documents disclose to me that the people involved in the assassination of the President from the Office of Naval Intelligence, the Secret Service, Division 5 of the FBI, and the Central Intelligence Agency. The reason stated was that he was a security risk, that he had ordered them to stop the sale and importation of drugs. According to the documents that I saw, his assassination was ordered by the policy committee of the Bilderberg Group, which is really the secret world government, and was carried out by agents of Division 5 of the FBI, the Secret Service, the Central Intelligence Agency, and the Office of Naval Intelligence, of which I was a part. The major controlling membership of these secret societies is a group known as the Round Table of Nine. They are the heads of the most powerful banking families in the world. Every secret brotherhood, every secret society, every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. That's their religion. President John F. Kennedy found out somehow that the CIA was behind the drug smuggling and the sale of drugs to the American people. And if you'll remember correctly, that was the years that the hippie movement began and the flower children began to come out where they found solace was drugs. What they call UFOs, these craft that fly around the sky are real. But they're not piloted by some little green guy from some other planet. They're owned and operated by the United States of America for one, the Soviet Union for another. A mystery always holds sway over those who don't understand it. And the priesthood was born. No king ever existed without the permission of the priesthood. And I don't care what religion you're talking about or what period of history you're talking about, it is the truth. The kings never had the power and don't to this day. Kings exist at the whim of the real power which is the priesthood standing behind the throne. The purpose of the importation and sale of illegal drugs to the American people was to finance the alien connected projects and other black projects which they knew they could not take to Congress for funding. There is an apathy that is running rampant in this country that is deadly. We are truly now at this moment a nation of sheep. And ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that sheep are always led to the slaughter. Thank you.